Forget all the fancy stuff. This specific Shatsy and UI update changes everything. Shatsy and just dropped some of the biggest components. And I must admit, they might look boring at first. However, they are the most practical and important building blocks in every single project. Now I challenge you. Take a look at your existing project and I bet you might have built a version of one of these components, if not more. So why waste hours wiring them up when you could simply just use these existing Shatsy and UI components? Because as you know, Shatsy and UI components are maintainable, customizable, accessible, and beautiful. And there is one component in particular that I'm a huge fan of. So let's quickly dive in. Now these are the components that Shatsy and UI has dropped. As a reminder, they work with every component library such as Radix, Space UI, React Aria, you name it. And you can simply copy paste them into your project, which is what makes Shatsy and UI different. Having said that, these are a bunch of components that Shatsy and UI has dropped. And let's start with the most requested one, which is the button group. A button group, as the name indicates, it's a container that groups written buttons together with consistent styling. It's great for action groups, split buttons, and more. Now you can think of button group as a wrapper for multiple buttons that want to stay visually connected. It's perfect for toolbars, split actions, or even filters. For example, this is simply how you would use it. You would wrap them up in a button group component that comes from Shatsy and UI and you add the two buttons underneath them. These buttons appear as one connected group as well. For example, if you hover over it, it has the consistent styling, unified borders and spacing around it and so on. Now, if you wanna flip it and make it vertical, for example, if you wanna use a button group separator to create split button, this is a classic drop down pattern here. Or if you have a prefix such as, so such as prefix or suffix buttons, text, so this is a button group text, this is a input, this is a button, and all of them could be clubbed together in button groups. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be just buttons, but it could also be like any type of form fields as well. Now this fixes the ugly three buttons mashed together and we have repeated styling all across. You get consistent styling as they're perfectly aligned and accessible. Next is input group. Now input group is input with icons, buttons, labels, and more. Now, just like we looked at buttons, input group also groups a bunch of icons, buttons, and more to our inputs. Now, this is all you're gonna need for grouping all the inputs. For example, we are grouping input here, we are grouping search icon, and we are wrapping them up, for example. So as you can see here, we have search, we have an email icon, we have a card. We have a card number, but now the icons are underneath it. Now it lets you add these icons buttons or text inside input, something everyone hacks together. I'm sure this is something that we all have previously looked at Stack Overflow and now just ask AI to build it. But again, you get that consistently from Shatsy and UI. And you can also add buttons to your input group as well. So you can add a search here or have the enter pattern too, which acts like as a button too. And if you take a look at a code for this one, for example, we have wrapped input group we have input group input instead of using just input directly. Then we have the input group add-on with the group button. So for example, the copy to clipboard, that's exactly how you would create it. Again, you get all this consistency and you could wrap them up in a group. Every form needs this. You don't need those absolute positioning hacks or extra wrappers. You, you can just simply use it and make your life simpler. And there are so many different examples here. This one is my favorite where it works with text areas as well. And you can build really complex components with lots of knobs, dials, or yet another prompt. For example, we have these two buttons here. Then we can type whatever we want over here. We can run it, whatever we want. And that makes it a input group. Now this is a component that every single form has, which is called as a field. And if you take a look at the field component, it is very useful for building complex forms. Now the abstraction here is beautiful because it not only works with just basic forms, but it also works with React hook form, task stack form, you can bring your own form or even server actions. For example, this is a basic field with an input. So for example, combining all these three elements, username, the input itself, and a label, a description here, these three make up a field and it works with all form controls that, that you 
see the nest set over here as well. So for example, if I type K and what are my password and so on, then you can just simply use these as a group of fields together. And forms, honestly, can be very complex. So having a field component really makes it a lot simpler for us. So what field does is that it handles all the boring but essential UI and accessibility wiring. There's labels, description, validation messages, error states, spacing, etc. And you get a field component, so you get consistent spacing throughout. And you can wrap them up, doesn't matter which form library you use. So it makes it a lot simpler. And it also adds all the accessibility wiring necessary for your forms as well. Because as you know, forms need a lot of different ARIA elements, ARIA labels, ARIA input tags, just to make sure that they are all accessible. So forms are accessible for your website and field allows you to do that. Next we have is one of my favorite ones, which is MP. Now this is for MP states. Now consistent components for MP screens. And this is one part that a lot of developers forget. But initially, when the first time that your user is going to access your app, they are going to encounter an empty state because there's nothing there really. And how you handle that is extremely important. And this is one piece of code that I have in every single app of mine. And as you can see, you get a component called as empty. The name is funny. And this is an empty state here. So no projects yet. And it gives you these two different button groups that you could use and a link here as well. So it tells the users exactly what they needed to do. For example, if you take a look at the code here, we have empty header, we have empty title, empty description, empty content. Personally, I do think this could have been a button group because there are a couple of buttons together. But yeah, so this is a really good example for empty states. You could also use them with avatars. For example, user is currently offline or 404 page not found and so on. You can just show a blank it's a good first impression for your app and blank states are always an afterthought so now you get a default one that looks good out of the box then next we have item now item is a straightforward flex container that has housed nearly any type of content for example this is a item container now it's a generic flex container for consistent layout patterns such as lists menu settings screens or cards and you could place all of them in item. Now this is an item. For example, if you take a look at the code, we have a basic item, we have a description, we have item actions and so on. And you may have seen this consistent styling everywhere. And if you just use an item for that, this allows you to show a clean list of items with uniform spacing. You could also turn them into clickable links if you want as well. And it's simple, but it's one of those layouts you rebuild in every single app. Now you get a component for that. And here's what a list of items looks like with item group. So you have a list of items, but then you have a group element for it. For example, you're looping through the items, but you get item, item media, item content, and so on. And sometimes you don't want them to look like cards because if that's one of the questions you had wherein like, why not just use a card component from Shatsian? Well, definitely, but then you need to override the styling of the card component to make it look like an item. So why not just simply use an item here? Because it's not necessarily a card here, it's an item. So that's a differentiator here. So you could just use this specific Shatsian item component. Then we have a KBD component that renders a keyboard key. Now this specific one is extremely handy and I have used in my Next.js course platform. You can see over here, if you press command key to search, and then if someone searches command key, then they'll be able to search through all the lessons. This is in fact a KVD group if I want. If I want to add multiple commands, keyboard commands, then you could do that. For example, control B becomes a keyboard group. In my case, it would be command K to search, and that becomes a group. Now you can, it just simply renders a keyboard key. I actually built a custom component here and I could simply just use this and utilize the Shatian UI component. And next we have a spinner. Now spinner is very obvious. It's the easiest one. It's pretty basic. We know what it does. You could use a spinner whenever there's a loading state, you could pass in different spinners here. For example, label with the spinner the different variants to that and so on. So if you take a look at the code, we have a button, we have a spinner. We have a button, we have a spinner and so on. Now I particularly find this one 
less useful. This is one of those things where it's a reusable component. You have ha all had the spinner everywhere. Now you can just use a chat and you're a component. And here is my take. Flashy components can be fun, but this is what makes Shad and UI production ready. Because real apps aren't made of carousels and charts. They are made of these forms, inputs, empty states, lists. And now you don't have to reinvent them. You could simply just repurpose them. So yeah, boring on the surface was secretly one of the biggest Shad CN update yet. These are the kind of updates that quietly change how we build apps and make our app look really modern and beautiful. As next steps, if you like this specific video, then definitely check out how you could add animations to your chat and UI components next. Or check out this amazing interview with Dan Abramow, one of the creators of React, where we dive into everything from React server components to future of React to how Next.js has evolved. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.